So Kyle, one of the mm -hmm. things that you you often talk to a lot of ventures on and is is where do they start? You know, so if they have an idea and they really obviously want to to build something of it, a lot of times we'll go through a workshop and we'll assemble a business model canvas with them. And on the business model canvas is, has, you know, cost structure, it's got revenue sources, it's got all these different pieces. And sometimes people think that's overwhelming. I'm like, where do I even start? You know, like where, what is the order in which I should solve these things, you know, and figure out these things. So what would you say to that question? It's a good one. Because we talk a lot about how we should even structure our workshops and where we should start in our workshops. So it's a lot of fun to think through, yeah, on the client side of things, where should you start? After you have all that information, if the canvas is already filled out, where does it make sense to begin? And I think we've started to settle in on three areas that kind of need to run in parallel that kind of all start to inform each other and are all related that help then set up the rest. And I think it starts with the problem, understanding the problem really well, making sure that that you understand what that is and that there is actually a problem to be solved. Now it might be an aspirin problem or a vitamin problem, but a problem nonetheless that we can get after it and start to test and, and think through how big of a problem is this? How many people experience this? How much are they willing to pay? And you can see it already starts to start to wander into some of the other boxes of value proposition and cost and revenue. I think that this, the next logical one is, well, if we recognize that we have the problem, then what's the solution? How do we fix that problem for that person. And again, is it a vitamin or is it a, a, an aspirin? And how do we narrow that in to being really well-defined and figuring out what that solution might be? And I think it starts to lead to kind of a, a process of where you're, you're wrestling with things at the same time. So you've got this idea of, well, I'm looking for a problem solution match, a problem solution fit. I think I might have a problem, but I can't actually solve it. Uh, or maybe I, maybe I start to, maybe I'm kind of looking at the other way. I feel like this might work, but does, is there a problem for it? So do I have a problem solution fit? And I think as you, as you feel and, and quantify and test that out and feel like, okay, I think we've identified the problem clearly. I think we have a, a way that we can solve it affordably. I think then that starts to lead to this idea of, well, now how do I have a solution market fit, which is, okay, I believe that people will like to balance on a scooter, but the two wheels are in, in, in tandem and it's going to have a handlebar like this segue, right? Oh, I believe that the solution will have a market. Yeah. Well, in, in reality it didn't, right? But you, they, so they had a problem and a solution. So they had a problem solution fit. People might want to get around in a slightly different way, but they didn't have yeah. that solution market fit. So there's two things that you kind of wrestle with and it's three areas. It's, it's customer problem solution. And then the rest kind of comes yes. along, right? Then you have your business. And that's where those, those opportunities to then figure out the, the, the more nuanced details of cost and structure and, and honing your message and doing all the big marketing and all the brand agency stuff, all that stuff kind of starts to fall into place there as you've worked your way through the problem solution fit and then the solution market fit. I threw in segue as an example, maybe that was a little hand fisted, but I think that's a great example yeah. of a product that yes. worked. They engineered it. It it's. It had like revolutionary technologies and trademarks and intellectual property in it. So it was a solution. There's a problem. I don't want a bike. Yes. I don't want a scooter. I don't want a skateboard. Okay. Well, there was no market for it because everyone <laughs> thought they looked nerdy. I, 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 now I feel like I need to go out and support them and go buy a Segway, you know? So. I know, right? I feel like maybe I should it, give that another shot. What are happening to those you know, guys? Kyle, where, what, what happens when you start at a different point? So like you start, let's, instead of starting at problem solution and then business market, mm. you know, what happens if you were to start at, you know, solution or what happens if you were to start at business or the market side, like, and, and kind of go and what problems do people run into in those cir circumstances? Yeah, that's a, that's a, I'm glad you asked that. That's a good question. It's, it's so fascinating because I think some people that are naturally on this, this product people spectrum that are more entrepreneurial, sometimes just stumble into this stuff, right? Like I'm thinking about a couple of clients of ours. They just come to us and say, I've got this business that's making a lot of money for yeah. every month help help me with this help me figure out some of these other pieces and it's been really interesting to kind of like reverse engineer yeah. like you have to orient okay where are we what is working and then you kind of reverse engineer like okay well this is the solution you have a solution to something so let's we need to like define what the problem is that you're solving for and i think as you start to work through that process you actually start to reveal how to yeah. help optimize their business and grow it even further which is, is a lot of fun it's that's a great question because i feel like it's almost so situational 
if you, I have the business model canvas in my mind right now, it's almost like, well, where, where do people's strengths lie? Do they have a really great unfair advantage? Do they have a, 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 a really killer way to deliver something at, you know, pennies on the dollar? And then how do you take that and start to leverage, leverage those things? And as I'm describing that, it almost feels like where does the entrepreneurial's natural unfair advantage lead? And then how do you then backfill that all into the other places? I've never thought about it that way, but just talking it out loud, it almost feels like, yes, it, you know, a couple of clients I'm thinking of, it's just like, wow, they, they have an unfair advantage. Like they, they took a, uh, an opportunity that they saw and, and leveraged it based on the skill sets that they had. And they, they naturally took advantage of that unfair advantage that they had. And now they're kind of like, okay, I need to take it to the next piece. And then it was fun. We bring back the product people spectrum. It's like, okay, so you're looking for a different set to start optimizing and organizing your business and, and mapping it out and figuring out how you can maybe get your costs under control because maybe you have found a solution, but your, your margin yes. is, is 1%, right? Now, how do we, how do we optimize that? We need a different I, set I of I think you're right. And um, I think we've, we've run into, weirdly think, enough, we've run into those situations where, you know, sometimes when you focus on like the business aspect before the problem or the solution, you're focused on things like, well, how much I got to charge for this thing? And you have no users. And you're like, well, like, but we've run into these right. oddball situations that you've, you've listed is like, it, it definitely happens when people focus mistakenly first on maybe a solution or the business first, and then they fall into a good thing. And they're like, oh, I don't know how this happened. And it's, it's definitely yeah. happened. Well, it, it, they don't, maybe even don't even fall into a good thing. Yes. They just have that knack, right. For being, for recognizing that opportunity. And, and it's like a superpower that some people have where they can just be like, oh, they, they connect yes. all the dots without necessarily defining it. You know what I mean? They, they look and they see, uh, I can't even think of a good example off the top of my head. They just know yes. that the lemonade stand needs to be right here on the corner. There. Poof. There they go. And there's suddenly there's, yes. a, you know, revenue happening. Um, it, it's. People have a knack for it, and then they they come to yes. the city to help try to figure out some of those other pieces yeah. to the puzzle. And it's so situational. It's it's so situational. I'm trying to think like from an entrepreneur perspective. Um, well, and that's like a whole how that would apply or interesting where that would look. dilemma. And I say interesting dilemma because one of the things that you know my background a lot is in corporate innovation at at some what I would call some motherships of who will not be named. And so it's 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 um. It's interesting because one of the things that I think I've experienced is, and you probably have too, Kyle, is it actually is a negative thing if you were to get millions or million or millions of dollars of funding and you've never, one, you might have not done this before, or you don't have a problem to solve or a solution to solve. And then to use that money, you're, you're yeah. unprepared for how best to use that money. Oftentimes, you know, when I first got, when I went to Silicon Valley and we ended up having a, a large amount of cash, I just hired and built a team out and it's like, let's build a team. And let's, when I should have sat there and actually run valid market validation, experimentation, found what problems we're solving, found the, you know, a potential solution, then started saying, I need to take some of that money and invest in more of the build out of it. So it's, Getting money too early in these huge organizations often causes problems of skipping these different these different places, which mm -hmm. that's that's a whole can of worms in itself. 